Welcome, everyone. Um, I was asked to give you guys a little bit of uh, uh, um, words of hopefully inspiration and positivity. And truthfully, uh, it's hard for me to even choose because there are so many different angles here um, that if we open our eyes, we'll see. Uh, I know that many of us see darkness right now. I know many of us uh, feel hopeless right now. I'm not going to lie. There are moments that I feel hopeless as well. But this is this is so much bigger than we realize. You know, I... I you know, I don't believe in coincidences. I'm assuming many of you guys don't believe in coincidences. I just, as I was coming down to the basement for this, I just kind of got sent a video two seconds ago um, about a, a man who was in the Six Day War and he had just moved to Israel and they were surrounded by all sides, by the enemies and by the three, uh, uh, you know, huge armies and and everyone was just like, that's it. It's the end of Israel. We're done. And there was this Rosh Yeshiva, this head of the Yeshiva, and he was basically, you know, completely calm. And they said to him, like, what on earth? Like, how are you... How are you not freaking out? How are you calm? And he said something which maybe uh, a week ago we would have rolled our eyes at. And he said, with unity like this, we will win. Now, that sounds very abstract, kind of, um, you know, cliche maybe even. But the reality is that in one week, one week, this nation went from the most divided we've ever been to the most unified we've ever been. And I mean that militarily, I mean that diplomatically, I mean that politically. We have never been more more unified than this. And our strength as a nation is in our unity. From the first second we became a nation, literally, the first second we became a nation. When did we become a nation? At Mount Sinai. We got the Torah. What does it say about the Jewish people standing at Mount Sinai? They were standing, they parked themselves in front of the mountain, but the word Vayichan, they parked, is said in singular. Not Vayichnu, Vayachnu, that the nation, 600,000 men, why is it speaking in singular? And so the famous Rashi says, Ki like one person with one heart, and that is our strength. What's happening today in terms of unity is hard to imagine, hard to fathom, hard to digest. It's unbelievable. There are so many initiatives right now that are happening that I have tech entrepreneurs reaching out to me to create databases to centralize all the initiatives because we're losing control because there's so many fundraisers, so many people sending equipment, so many people. It's unbelievable. Nobody, no nation in the world behaves this way other than the Jewish people. And I have to tell you, three days before this horrible war broke out, three days, and you know uh, what's good about social media is that you can go verify what I'm telling you right now. Uh, three days before this war broke out, I... I had a feeling. I don't know. I had a hunch. I don't know what it was. I'm not a big voodoo guy, but I had a feeling. And that feeling was that something big was about to happen because I said in the post, and you can read it on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, wherever you want. I said, between America and Russia, Ukraine and Russia, America and China, internal politics in America, anti-religious in Israel, there's just too many things. We're reaching a boiling point. Something big is going to happen. And sit down for this. In the post, I said, not only is something big going to happen, but Israel will be at the center of it. Guys, I'm not one of these Mashiachist kind of guys. Like, we all believe in Mashiach, but I'm telling you guys something. What is going on right now is not a small step. It is a massive, massive step towards Mashiach coming. I don't know if he's coming tomorrow. I don't know if he's coming today. But if you think this is just some regional war that you're not paying attention, America has never sent the type of weapons they've sent to Israel, these ships bringing jet. It's unbelievable what they sent here. I'm not a big expert on, you know, on, on, uh, on military or even on, you know, marine uh, uh, weapons. But I will say that somebody who does know told me that what America sent to Israel is, is more powerful than the entire Israeli army. I don't know if that's true or if it's not true. But what is what America sent to Israel is unparalleled, unprecedented. I just read two seconds ago that not only are they sending over these weapons and to defend Israel, but they've promised that if Hezbollah gets involved, they are in the war, America. And they literally just now sanctioned supporters of Hamas around the world uh, to basically uh, pull their funding. If I had told you two weeks ago that the European Union would even be discussing stopping the funding to the Palestinian Authority, you would have thought I was on, I don't even know what. But this is what's happening right now, guys. This is, these are miracles. I am in, you know, many groups where I get breaking news about what's happening. I'm trying to update my audience on, on, on social about what's happening. And if I showed you these messages, there is no way you are not going to see miracles. It is unbelievable. It, it, sirens in, in, in Tel Aviv, sirens in Tel Aviv. Si and then it's like, where did they land? 
Where'd the rockets go? Oh, they fell in they fell in empty area empty areas. Have you been in Israel? What empty areas? We're a tiny, we're a country smaller than New Jersey. Where are the empty areas? They're falling in the sea. They're falling in where? How? Hashem is protecting us now. I understand. I know what you're thinking. How could you say that after this horrible? Trust me, as someone who lost his older brother to terror, you don't have to tell me. Every every human being that we lose to terror and to wars is, is an entire world and, an, and a horrible tragedy. But we also have to look at the bigger picture. We also have to look at what Hashem's doing for us. And I'm telling you, the worst is behind us. We are going in a very positive direction. I'm telling you that. And I'm saying to you one thing. This is the most important thing. Whoever you are, wherever you are, don't just sit and watch and read the news and read social media. Don't do that. You're a human being who God decided the world cannot exist without you in it. And therefore, you have a job. You have a role. Every one of our roles is different. Some people do social media. Some people raise money for, 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 for the idea. Some people can just call their mom and comfort them. Whatever it is you can do, don't sit back. Now is the time for you, whoever you are, to bring your impact. And again, it could be anything. It doesn't have to be something huge. There's a huge uh, uh, um, rally being planned in New York and Times Square. Show up for that. Don't belittle your ability to impact. Again, my late brother, Ari Fold, who may, some of you may know, some of you may not know, you can Google him afterwards. He was one person, one person who impacted millions of lives, millions of lives. People say to me till today, someone wrote me a message. I could show you the message five minutes ago. Showed me a picture of their baby. I said, why is this guy sending me a picture of his baby in the middle of a war? What the heck? Two minutes later, she writes me and she says, meet my son, Ari. He was named after your brother. What? Did you meet my brother? No. Did you ever speak to my brother? No, he impacted my life. How did he do that? From behind a keyboard, okay? So I'm telling you, each and every one of you can bring a real impact to make a real difference. Don't dismiss that. Stand up, do whatever you can do. And I'm telling you guys, this is way bigger than Israel. I, I don't want to give you predictions, but there's no question that Hezbollah is about to make a big mistake and mess with us. You don't mess with us, all right? When you mess with us, we unify. When we unify, you better hide. Okay, we are unifying like never before. Hezbollah is messing with us. America is going to come in and going to show them who's boss. And when they do that, I'm pretty sure Putin's going to get involved too. And when Putin gets involved, Iran's going to get, guys, this is bigger than Israel. Mashiach is around the corner. I beg and I plead of every single one of you, please, please do your part. Stand up, do whatever you can do. We in Israel, we need you, okay? I'm telling you, you cannot imagine every single message that I get, every single comment that I get. You think it's just a comment on social media, but it gives me fuel because I'm I'm on my phone 20 hours a day reaching tens of millions of people on X, on Twitter, you know, and I have people, Jared Kushner just wrote me five an hour ago saying, thank you for your tweets. I'm like, what? Jared Kushner follows me? I'm a, I'm a guy in Beit Shemesh, Israel with a phone. That's all I got, a phone. I'm sitting with my thumbs and, and I'm impacting millions of lives. Guys, don't dismiss your ability to change the world. Now is the time to step up. And I'm telling you guys, things are happening. Good things are happening. And we know the ending. Don't forget that. We know the ending. We don't know what's going to happen until we get to the ending. But we know the ending. And the ending is a good one. The ending is a good one because Hashem loves us. Okay? We don't know why He does what He does. I'm not going to pretend that I understand how this could possibly have happened. Both from a philosophical perspective and from a military perspective. I still don't believe it happened. Nobody knows how this happened. I don't know. These, the state of Israel is going to be investigating this for the next two decades. We don't know how this happened. But I don't. I care less about how it happened militarily or logistically than philosophically. How could Hashem, who loves us, I don't know. We don't know how Hashem works. But we do know that Hashem loves us. That we know because He tells it to us. Hashem loves us. He, he is our Father. He is protecting us. We, we think of the Iron Dome. Listen, Dr. Daniel Gold, who invented the Iron Dome, is a friend of mine. I sat with him and I spoke to him. He told me the story of the, how the Iron Dome was, was, was invented. There were rockets raining down on Israel. And everyone was like, how do we, how do we, how do we combat this? What are we going to do? And everyone came up with these ideas. And he just said, I don't like that idea. I don't like that idea. I don't like that idea. And he said, you know what I want to do? I want to detonate the rockets midair. And they said, What? A rocket midair? You can't detonate a rocket midair. It's in the air for seconds. What are you talking about? He said, well, I want to do that. He went to the Israeli army and he said, I, he said, I want to develop this system that detonates rockets midair. And they said, uh, not possible. Sorry. He went to the Israeli uh, government and told them what he wants to build. They said, uh, not possible. Sorry. He went to the U.S. military and told them what he wants to build. And they said, not possible. Sorry. And he went, everyone he spoke to said it's impossible. And then he went 
and he got it funded and he built it. And I'm telling you guys, look at what's going on. We are detonating 95% of the rockets that our enemies are shooting at us. You know, I want to be clear. Words matter. I don't want to use the word rockets. Rockets sound like they're some kind of small little thing that somebody built in their backyard. These are missiles. Okay, these are missiles that if one falls, we see what happens. And we're detonating them midair. Hashem, this is Hashem's hand on top of us, guys. He's protecting us. We had this in the desert. We had Anani Akavod. We had the clouds of glory in the desert. Okay, this is that. And I'm telling you guys something, and I mean this in the most sincere way, the most authentic way. And I and I promise you, if you open your eyes, you'll see this. Guys, listen. We, we know, or we don't know, but this is the reality, that only 20% of the Jews left Egypt. Do you know that? 80% of the Jews stayed in Egypt. They thought, oh, I'm, I'm good here. I'm safe here, whatever. 20% left. When, when they were in the desert, they wanted to stay in the desert. They didn't want to go into Israel. They wanted Hashem to protect them. Hashem said, go into Israel. That's your job. They went into Israel. They jumped into the sea. They, they did these things, and Hashem protected them. Hashem's doing the exact same thing, guys. He is watching over us. He is protecting us. We are going to win this war because we have no other choice. We are fighting for our home. The Jewish people always prevail. Remind me where the ancient Greeks are today or the ancient Romans. Where are they? Where are the Nazis? Where, where are they? None of them are here. None of them. We're here. That makes no sense, guys. You don't want to forget everything else. Forget everything else. I want someone to explain to me how the Jewish people are still here. I want someone to explain to me how the Jewish people won the Six-Day War. There is not a military strategist in the world who can tell you how that happened. The only explanation is the clouds of glory. Hashem is watching over us, guys. This is the time to shine. This is the time to unify. This is the time to do good, to bring impact, to bring Mashiach. And I promise you, I know it's hard to see, guys. Trust me. I, I'm I'm seeing it. I'm feeling it. There, you know, I'm in bomb shelter with my kids. It's this is horrible. Okay. I'm not belittling that. And I'm not trying to paint a picture that everything's glory. And no, it's terrible. And what happened is beyond human ability to digest okay i can't even i can't even fathom what we went through last shabbos it's just it's it happened it's horrible okay but now we need to step up we need to we need to make sure that the worst is behind us and we need to obliterate obliterate and completely just make sure that hamas is not is no more and this is the important thing you need to understand guys when this is all over when this is all over listen carefully what was will no longer be. Mark my words. World order, Middle East, what was will no longer be. We will not. We will not have a reality of radical Islamic terrorists living close to the Israeli border, accumulating sophisticated weapons from Iran. Not going to happen. It's over. The, the, the mask has been lifted. The world sees it. Unfortunately, some people are still so immoral that they refuse to see it. A bomb, you know, falls on a hospital. Of course, they blame Israel. We bring proof that it wasn't Israel. It doesn't matter. The haters are going to hate. The anti-Semites will always be out there. But millions of people, guys, millions of people now support Israel who didn't one week ago. The world is rallying around us. The world knows that we are the moral side of this. The world knows that this is evil versus good and nothing less than that. There is no more equal sign. Till now, it was an equal sign. Oh, the IDF and the Palestinians, oh, they're shooting each other. No more. Now it's the moral side and the immoral side, and the world sees it. And you know what? It's hard to watch those protests in England and in Harvard. It's hard. But we got to understand that those are anti-Semites. They're there. They've always been there, and they will always be there. The reality is that millions of people around the world, governments in Europe, in Asia, in, in, in everywhere, are standing behind Israel. They have our backs and their support is incredibly meaningful and historic. That is what I, I want to leave you guys with today, that what's going on today is not a war between Arabs and Israelis or Muslims and Jews. No, 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 no. This is a war, radical Islamic terrorists against the Western world. They say it loud and clear. The world now knows it. That is tremendous. That is historic. This is a huge step in the right direction. And I know that's hard to hear and it's hard for me to say, but I'm telling you guys, unbelievable, amazing, historic things are around the corner. We all need to do our part. We need to pray. If you pray, now's the time to pray. If you don't pray, now's the time to pray. Pray, all right? Because we have Hashem and that's all we have. Hashem's protecting us. Hashem loves all of us. He will help us win this war. He will use the IDF as his vehicle, as his tool as his messenger to win this war. 
We will win. We will come out stronger as a nation. And we will come out stronger diplomatically, politically, and in every other way. And I'm telling you guys, this is a huge step in the direction of bringing the final, final redemption where all of us, every single one of you guys is going to come here and I'm going to buy you guys some, some shawarma. And I'm looking forward to that. So guys, keep your spirits up. Keep doing what you're doing. Bring impact. Let's change the world. Let's change the world. Let's change the Middle East. Let's change world order. Mashiach is around the corner, guys. Listen, uh, if you guys want to, you want to open it up to questions, is that relevant or... I don't know. You can't do that. I would say um, the, the chat is arranged so that you can send a, a message to any of the hosts, which is, includes myself or Hill. Um, so if anyone wants to send in a message to uh, as, as a question uh, for Hill to answer. Someone I'm wrote, I'm so made uh, by your, motivated by your actions. I appreciate that. Whoever wrote, I'm so made motivated by your actions. But I promise you, it, it might look like all, you know, glory and whatever, watching it from afar. But I'm telling you, I've I could show you the blisters I have on my fingers from being on my phone 20 hours a day. Okay. It's, it's, it's hard work, right? I'm not, I'm not saying I, I appreciate your comment, but you have to understand I'm working. Everyone's working. You need to be working too. You need to be working. You need to be on it. You need to not sit there and just watch the news. That doesn't help anyone do what you can to help again, even if it's calling your mother or your brother, or your sister, and just comforting them. That's it. That's all do that. And if you can't do more then do that, and if you could do more, use your Facebook, don't belittle it. If it's one person that you you get through to, one person. My brother, again, he told me it's not about the people you're convincing. It's about the other people that are watching this conversation. You're not, you got to speak the truth. That's the bottom line, guys. Don't sit back. So I appreciate the, the compliment, but just know my actions are no different than your actions. You could do the same thing I'm doing. Hey, brother, Moshe Eisenberg, KBY class of 96. Oh, cool. Long time no speak. What's the message we should be posting, if anything, on social media platforms? You should be, I would I would recommend not asking you to follow, but I would recommend take a look at my X or Facebook or whatever it is. Uh, I would, what I'm trying to do is balance between updating the true updates, real time, true updates, like with the hospital. Of course, I got an update that the hospital was bombed before it was on the news. I knew it was not Israel because Israel, the IDF, who I work with, told me they did not bomb at that time. Um, and... I knew it before anyone. So I posted it on X. I said, guys, heads up. I literally wrote heads up. You're all going to hear about a hospital being bombed and you're going to hear the propaganda from Hamas that it was Israel. I'm telling you guys right now, it was not Israel. And that tweet got, I don't know, a million and a half views and a million and a half people were exposed to the truth before their minds were polluted with propaganda. And I'm just one person, guys. So the bottom line is the news, in my opinion, your message should be two. One, positivity, right? Everyone, we need hope. Even if it's, you think, that one post on Facebook with a, with, a, with a message of hope isn't isn't impactful. You cannot imagine how impactful it is. One nice word of how this is going to be okay, or how it's okay to not be okay. Anything, just a positive word, so impactful. And to update the world on the truth. At the end of the day, there are facts, guys. We're not getting into politics here, but there are facts. The facts on the ground are that in 2005, we gave them Gaza to create a state. There is no debating that. And if anybody debates that, they are a liar. This is a fact. We evacuated 10,000 people from Gaza and gave it to them on a silver platter and said, create a state. If they wanted a state, they had a state. What did they do? They created a terror base. They don't want a state. Read their charter. Anybody who says that the Palestinians want a state, tell them to go read their charter. The PLO charter, the Hamas charter, they say it. They want dead Jews. So stop with the false narrative. Spread truth. Spread positivity. You cannot imagine how deeply it impacts people's lives. Don't belittle it. Don't dismiss it. Do your part. Guys, I really appreciate the opportunity to talk to you. You can all reach out to me if you need a little chizuk yeah. afterwards, Hello? anywhere you want, email or whatever. I don't know if you got this message, if you have a sec. Um, someone else wrote, a lot of family in the States are, ascending, are, are saying we should leave Israel for a while until this is over. What do you think? Okay, so I'll give a disclaimer and I'll say I'm not judging anyone that leaves. Let's just put that out there right now. Okay, I'm, I'm not judging anyone. You know, if, if, you're, if your parents tell you to leave, you got to do what your parents tell you. And that's, that's, um, that's an independent statement. I'm not, I'm, leave that. Now, if you're asking me, I'm going to say something a little bit controversial and maybe even uh, not politically correct. I think that Jews that run away from Israel today are going to be judged in history. They're going to be judged as cowards who left and abandoned their people. That's what I think. Now, if you're a kid and you're a teenager, I'm not, you know, you got to do what your parents saying, and please don't, you know, misrepresent what I'm trying to say. But I have American citizenship. I could get on a plane right now. I could, you don't think, by the way, let's just, uh, let's just mention the elephant in the room. I don't think anybody thinks it's very safe in America right now. And the difference is that here, 
we're in charge of our own safety. There, we're at the mercy of someone else. So I'm, I'm not even going to talk about that. But the bottom line is, you know, if you if you are able to make the decision whether to stay or whether to leave, I, I could not recommend strongly enough to stay here with your brothers. Um, you know, it's what you need to do as a Jew, in my opinion. Uh, again, having said that, if your parents, you know, want you to come home, you got to go home. But uh, but this is where you belong. This is where you belong. This is where your parents belong. And and I, and you know, I'm not going to get into the whole you know Zionism, move to Israel, not move to Israel. But I will say one thing, and this is super important. I mentioned the Jews in the desert, guys. We we learn about these things. We learn about the the spies and the de- do we think about it though? What did the spies do? The spies were the most important leaders of the nation. Do you know that they were the twelve leaders of the twelve tribes? They weren't just some regular people. And how did they come back and say how horrible Israel was? What was wrong with them? Well, why don't we think about it? What was the narrative, guys? What was the narrative? The narrative was we're in the desert. We have a direct line of communication with God. God's giving us man from the sky. He's giving us food. He's giving us meat. He's, he's surrounding us with clouds of glory. We are, as we like to say today, from. We're in direct connection to God. I'm going to go into Israel now and make an economy and an army. And what are you talking about? Let me stay in the desert. And before that, they said, leaving Egypt to go to some random country. What? I, my, I was born in Egypt. My parents were born in Egypt. My grandparents, this is where I belong in Egypt. Now we look at 80% of the Jews stayed. We we look at that. We're like, what the, how's that possible? And that's what I'm saying to you guys right now. Not pushing any aliyah on anyone, but just understand it doesn't have to happen tomorrow. It doesn't have to happen the day after. But as Jews here, this is where we belong. We all pray to Yerushalayim. We all face Yerushalayim. We all long to Yerushalayim. This is where we belong. So, you know, if your parents are making you come home, okay. But if you're asking me if you, as an individual, as a human being, should make a decision to leave or to stay, I strongly, strongly recommend that you stay both for your own soul. And truthfully, this is a historic moment. I would not recommend abandoning your brothers in Israel. And I'm sorry if that's politically incorrect to say. Any other questions? Okay. We got a lot of questions here. Yeah, you're welcome to. I don't. I don't know what your time is like, but okay. you're welcome. Yeah, El said it's awesome to see you here. Give us a few tips for social media engagement, please. Even if it's a simple action, thanks, and see you on LinkedIn. Hi, El. Um, I. I mean, you know, again, I'm sorry for the cliche, but you know, someone, not someone, I get 50 messages in an hour saying, "Hey, follow me, tweet this for me, share this for me." Focus on the content that you're sharing. Fo- this is a general rule, but you know, for sure now. Don't focus on getting more followers. Don't listen. Uh, someone sent me a tweet today. He just opened Twitter. I keep saying Twitter X. He just opened his X account. He posted something on X. He had zero followers. I someone shared the, the tweet with me, back channel on WhatsApp, and I retweeted it, and it got thousands and thousands and thousands of views. He had no followers. So don't don't think for a second that if your content's good, it won't reach anyone. It will reach people. So just focus on the content, focus on the truth, focus, don't focus on negativity. I have I have CEOs reaching out to me literally 300 times today saying, how do we do a smear campaign on that anti-Semite? How do we get how do we expose that anti-Semite? Guys, listen, I'm not telling anyone what to do. In my opinion at this time, in history, we need to focus on positivity. We need to focus on what, what we need to do to win this war, both on the battlefield and on the digital battlefield. I'm not saying that anti semites shouldn't be exposed, but I don't think that's the best use of our time. So I would say focus on positivity, focus on content. Don't worry about the followers. Don't worry about the, it will get to where it needs to go. Um, okay. Amen. Amazing to hear you, to read your post, to give us some strength, clarity, focus, and inspiring action. Uh, maybe bless with a stream of good news soon. Amen. Uh, going to say for a week is tomorrow. Um, can I bring you back something that will help you with your mission? I'm coming back in a week to Israel. Uh, thank you, Jamie. I'll appreciate, I, I'll, I mean, I don't know. I, I'll think about it. I just got my new iPhone 15, so I would have asked you for that, but I don't need that anymore. Uh, I don't need anything. Thank you. Just bring just bring you. Just bring you. More Jews in Israel. We need it. Go with the positive. All right, guys. I'm here. You guys can all reach out to me anywhere. Uh, I don't – I, I was going to say I don't miss – I don't not reply to any messages, but the, the volume of messages that I'm getting today, unfortunately, I, I do miss some things, so – you can reach out to me, email, Facebook, Twitter, whatever it is. Uh, uh, you could get, you can give them my email if you want. Um, I'm here. If you need a little strength, I'm happy to provide it if I can. I'm a human being, and I feel I have my moments too. Don't don't think for a second that I don't. We're all humans, and like I said before, it's okay not to be okay, guys. Embrace it. This is a horrible, dark time for us. It's okay. It's okay to feel sad. It's okay to feel hopeless, despair. It's it's okay. These are normal emotions, and I feel them, and we all feel them. But we need to focus on the future. We need to focus on building, on uniting, and on bringing Mashiach. That's, that's at the end of the day what we need to focus on right now, and I believe we're getting so close, guys, so close. He's around the corner. 
All right, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you looking so forward much, to hearing from you and looking forward to buying you shawarma in Israel. Thank you so much, Hillel. I really, uh, on behalf of NCSY, on behalf of myself, thank you so much for joining and for being a part of this and for just really, I would say, broadening the picture. I think so much, so often we think about the the, the one story or the unfortunate news that's going on, but to really view it as a, as a as a bigger process and a bigger picture of what's going on. Thank you. My, my favorite summer of my life was NCSY, well, second favorite summer of my life was NCSY Colo. You know what my first favorite summer of my life was? My second year at NCSY Colo. <laughs> NCSY is amazing, guys. It was an honor to speak to you guys. NCSY is amazing. Keep doing what you're doing. And uh, let's bring Mashiach, guys. Let's bring Mashiach. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you okay. so much, everyone, for joining. Have a great night. Bye-bye.